Right, these are some songs that we've been doing for the past couple years, and uh, we've been getting a lot of requests from our fans to release those as B-sides. So we ended up making this into an EP to kind of keep people uh, busy until our next record, Antichrist Superstar, comes out uh, sometime next year. I was always into the lyrics to that song, and I thought maybe uh, other people weren't maybe getting the same interpretation that I was, and I wanted to uh, redo the song where you could really focus on what uh, was being said, as I thought it was a dark, a dark song, and I liked uh, the idea of use and abuse, how it was being discussed in that, so I wanted to kind of share that with uh, you know, a, a newer crowd of listeners. It's got a bit of a theme running through it. Uh, it started off, of course, with Dope Hat, which was the single that we were focusing on and uh, dealing with the use and abuse uh, that's talked about in that song and then with Sweet Dreams and there's a few other uh, tracks. Uh, we were living in New Orleans at the time and uh, you know, different subjects uh, that played a big part in our lives for those four months, uh, you know, ranging from drugs to sex and whatever's in between. As we just kind of wanted to express uh, what we went through during that period, and this, this music is kind of a little diary of, of those four months. And it may seem kind of chaotic, but that's exactly how our lifestyles were, you know, before we left on this tour. So uh, if it doesn't make sense, that's because. Uh, our lives didn't make too much sense at the time. <laughs> well, there's a few. I kind of want to keep it uh, more up to the listener to figure it out. But uh, one of the tracks that uh, we recorded in our apartment in New Orleans, uh, White Trash, uh, features uh, vocals and guitar playing by a, a guy named Tony Wiggins. And this was a uh, this strange fellow we met last year on our travels. He's a, a southern gentleman with southern ideals, so he tends to be uh, what a lot of people would consider a redneck or white trash. So I thought it was ironic to get him to do a cover of that song. And uh, we ran into some trouble with some of the things that he's done because he's tried to, you know, uh, harm certain people in our organization, and uh, he gets into a lot of trouble. So it. Mainly because of him, our EP was delayed, so he's a, he's a dangerous character. He's a good friend of ours. Well, uh, Trent worked mostly on the three cover songs, and uh, we wanted to just bring out the strong points of the songs, and I thought a lot of the strong points in them were the lyrics, and that's why I picked, you know, those three. Uh, I Put a Spell on You is always a favorite song of mine and a lot of the people that I've uh, been influenced by have covered that song. Arthur Brown covered it, uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, uh, Diamante Galas, and uh, I just, something that wasn't really expressed on Portrait uh, were some of the feelings that were put across in Sweet Dreams and I Put a Spell on You and it deals with the different uh, part of my personality, you know, dealing with love and, and those types of emotions. And I thought I Put a Spell on You was a, was a great song to express that because it's very obsessive and it's, uh, you know, to me it's like one of the original satanic rock songs that a lot of people would overlook, you know. So uh, I really like that song. The Patti Smith song, Rock and Roll Nigger, that we picked, I think that's a song that we've always liked and always wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to do that for uh, Natural Born Killer soundtrack, but they ended up, you know, they used the original. Well, I'm glad because we saved this for our thing, but that's a song that uh, is almost like an anthem for our generation and our fans because it's, it's, uh, it's about being an individual and being uh, the people not accepting you for, for who you are and what you like and what you look like and things like that. And uh, I think it's important to demystify words like nigger because it's uh, something that if you're a white person and you say that, then you know people consider you a racist. But that's it's not what the song's about. That was the intention of the song, and, and I think it's yeah, 
that's uh, that song is uh, what uh, punk rock and, and things like that were uh, were all about when they were invented. They were about pissing people off, and I think that's an important part of music that's being forgotten today. Yeah, but I wouldn't really consider it vocals. It was, it's just sort of a, um, a love ballad about somebody that died. That was uh, a lot of people uh, first heard that that number one smash when we were on the Donahue show, and he played that on his mini cassette recorder that he uh, is one of his instruments that he performs with. I want to know um, why it is that all of you seem to have satanic signs all over you, and what is it that makes does this music cause you to do what you do? Is that directed at us or the parents? That's funny. Twiggy. <laughs> uh, That's your little the, the music tape causes okay. us to do what we do. Uh, we cause the music to do what it does, I think. And uh, people wanted to know what the song was, so we put it on the EP. But it was a, a little number that he came up with and we just decided to stick on it. Uh, yeah, Scabs Guns and Peanut Butter. White Trash is the is uh, well, a well, it's I, acoustic I, too. That's yeah, that's I wonder. Scabs Guns and Peanut Butter is that real short one. That's no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought. See, I was getting confused. I thought you might have thought that that was me singing. That's what I was. Because I never really thought of this. You know what? Also, on the credits, I just recorded on the record this. company fucked up. Did that? Misprinted a lot of shit. They got that one right, but they fucked up a lot of the other ones. Um, much like Family Trip at the beginning of Portrait of an American Family, uh, the scene from Willy Wonka where they're on the boat ride, uh, we took that and put it to use for the Dope Had video and we made a visual reenactment of that and it's, uh, we're looking to uh, create uh, like uh, the irony of a children's show being a band uh, uh, that, that uh, parents would consider very dangerous for children. We, we thought it would be ironic to make our video look like a children's show, much like uh, H.R. Puffin stuff or something like that when we grew up. So uh, that was the approach that we went into with that video. And it's, uh, it's more of a drugged out, psychedelic version of the original Willy Wonka boat ride. Not, not with the law just yet. Uh, when we were in uh, Los Angeles, Tony Wiggins showed up and he got us into a lot of trouble. We ended up carving a big star on his chest with a broken beer bottle. And uh, he was bleeding all over the place, so everyone got mad at him. Uh, just last week, we were in, or two weeks ago, we were in uh, Wichita, Kansas, and someone threw a live chicken on stage, which was interesting. And then, uh, most recently in Pittsburgh, uh, I had uh, uh, got a cut on my chest and I was bleeding on stage and uh, some of the bouncers uh, were mad that, the, that they had gotten some blood or something on them so they, they wanted to murder me after the show but I escaped. Uh, we plan on recording that at the beginning of the year so it'll be in 1996. Uh, we'd love to have something out on June 6th, 1996. Don't stand too close to the stage. I'd also like to make a little request for anyone that might show up tonight. There's a track on our EP if you have that, and it's, uh, I can't say it on the air, but it refers to a gentleman by the name of Frankie. Excuse me. Yeah. Are you Frankie, the manager of Marilyn Manson? Road manager, yeah. You uh, want to tell us a little bit about Frankie? No comment. It's not it's, so. It's something that you're not proud of, or just something you don't want to talk about. Uh, I don't know anything about it, really. Have you ever? No comment. All right. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it's like on the road with Marilyn Manson? Take a good look at my eyes. It tells it all.
I see a lot of uh, objects in your eyes. Pain, pain, pain. frustration. <laughs> I'd like to, the crowd to uh, to uh, participate in a chant involved around on that track for tonight. That'd be 